Welcome back everybody to another history reaction video and uh, this one has been recommended to me multiple times both here on the channel but also over on the recommendation page on Discord uh, and this one is a German World War One veteran describing killing a French soldier in a bayonet charge. Now I have not watched this video so I really don't know what the content is but I can kind of expect based on the title and since a number of you have recommended it to me, I'm guessing that there's a reason you've recommended it to me. But I wanted my reaction to be uh, organic and real. So we're going to watch this together. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the contents of this video and what it all entails. So let's dive in. One day we got orders to storm a French position. We got in. And my comrades fell right and left of me. But then... I was confronted by a French corporal, he with his bayonet at the ready, and I with my bayonet at the ready. For a moment, I felt the fear of death, and in a fraction of a second, I realized that he was after my life exactly as I was after his. I was quicker than he was. I tossed his rifle away and I ran my bayonet through his chest. You know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about massive troop movements, thousands or even millions of men, attacks on cities, large uh, artillery uh, barrages and all this kind of stuff. But really, in the end, this is what war is. And I've never fought in combat, so I, I don't know. I just know what I've read and what I've heard others describe. But this is what it comes down to. A German soldier, a French corporal, who can be quicker? One lives and one dies. And in this case, the German lives and the French corporal, unnamed man, dies. He fell, put his hand on the place where I had hit him, and then I thrust again. Blood came out of, of his mouth and he died. I felt physically ill. Mm. I nearly vomited. My knees were shaking and I was quite frankly ashamed of myself. My comrades, I was a corporal there then, were absolutely undisturbed by what had happened. Or at least that's how they described it. I mean, I appreciate this guy's honesty. He was sick to his stomach. He did what he had to do because if he hadn't done that, then he would have been the one that was dead. Nobody would blame a person in war for having to do that, but that doesn't take away your humanity at taking the life of a fellow human being. This guy probably, had he not been put into this position in war, maybe he was drafted, I don't know, would have never harmed another human being this way. And yet, because of the circumstances of world history, he finds himself in this situation. One of them boasted that he had killed the poor Lee with, his, with the butt of his rifle. Another one had strangled the captain, the French captain. A third one had hit somebody over the head with his spade. And they were ordinary men like hmm. me. One of them was a tram conductor. Another one a commercial traveler, two were students, the rest were farm workers, ordinary people who never would have thought to do any harm to anyone. How did it come about hmm. that they were so cruel? I remembered then that we were told that the good soldier kills without thinking of his adversary as a human being, the very moment he sees in him a fellow man, he is not a good soldier anymore. Think about that. To be a good soldier, you have to set aside every decent part of your humanity. That's what millions of men were forced to do. These were people that we were forcing because of politics, because of things that were... Nothing to do with these individual soldiers. Decisions that were made that forced them to become adversaries of each other, to force them to set aside their humanity and see someone as an animal, as, as less than human, as an object to be destroyed. 
in order to survive. That's what war is in the end. And that's why it's so brutal and intimate and ugly in the end. But I had in front of me the dead man, the dead French soldier. And how would I like him to have raised his hand? I would have shaken his hand huh. and we would have been the best of friends. Because he was nothing like me but a poor oh. boy who had to fight, who had to go in with the most cruel weapons against the men who had nothing against him personally, who only wore the uniform of another nation, oh, who wow. spoke another language, but a man who had father and mother and a family perhaps. And so I felt. I woke up at night sometimes drenched in sweat because I saw the eyes of my fallen adversary. You know, we talk about the casualties of war. We talk about killed and wounded. We don't talk about people like this. And multiply this guy's story times millions of stories. People who maybe weren't injured physically by war, who maybe came home without a scratch on them, that were scarred and just destroyed internally for the rest of their lives. This man has had to live with this every day of his life, what he did. And again, didn't do anything wrong. He did what he had to do. He did what he was ordered to do. He was put in that position. But he still lives with that every day. And, and living with watching your buddies around you die. Probably scenes that the worst horror movie could not do justice to. Man, I can't imagine. Of the enemy. And I try to convince myself what would have happened to me if I wouldn't have been quicker than hmm. him. What would have happened to me if I wouldn't have thrust my bayonet first into his belly. Oh. What was it that we soldiers stabbed each other, strangled each other, went for each other like mad dogs? What was it that we, who had nothing against them personally, fought to them, fought with them to the very end in death? Hmm. We were civilized people after all. But I felt that the culture we boasted so much about is only a very thin lacquer which chips off the very moment we come in contact with cruel things like real war. To fire at each other from a distance, to drop bombs is something impersonal. Hmm. But to see each other's white in the eyes and then to run with a bayonet against a man that was against my conception and against my inner feeling. No, and I talked about this yesterday with somebody. Um, some people have within them uh, a certain ugliness. I'm not saying this guy does because he clearly doesn't. Some people have a certain ugliness within them already. And when you remove the constraints of society and civil government and law and you unleash them upon a battlefield that can come out that's why you see things like um massacres that you know like we, we give you an example uh world war ii there was what we call the malmody massacre during the battle of the bulge where german soldiers lined up a bunch of americans i think 80 or so of them and killed them what we don't talk as much about is that not long after that, members of the 11th Armored Division and uh, Patton's Army did the exact same thing to German soldiers after they had heard about that. It was covered up. Of course, the Allies won the war, and so there were no real reprisals for that. But um, every side in a war has people like that who are capable of ugly things when you remove the restraints that keep them from acting out on their innermost demons. Uh, and I think he's tapping into a little bit of that here, about how we talk about society, we talk about being civil and being 
you know, above that kind of thing. But then when it comes right down to it, we do very ugly things to each other. Anything else? Hmm. That was, that was very fascinating. Obviously, uh, we, we should probably hear that kind of thing more. Uh, because we tend to glorify war, don't we? We tend to talk about the heroes. We tend to talk about the big events. We talk about it kind of from a satellite view, right? Looking at maps and looking at where corps and divisions and armies and all that move on a battlefield, talking about the generals and the leaders making the decisions. But like I said at the beginning, what it comes down to in the end is a German corporal and a French corporal with their bayonets and who's going to be a little bit faster. Uh, bef- and and kill the other guy before he can kill him. And that's what it really comes down to. I would love to hear your thoughts about that. I have great respect for anybody who has experienced something like that and managed to put their life back together afterwards. Uh, great respect for this German soldier for sharing that story and for sharing his humanity. Uh, it's a good reminder yet again, as I often say, that war is never as simple as good guy versus bad guy good versus evil there's all kinds of nuance and shades of gray and uh things like that and especially in world war one you know obviously world war ii there were a lot of other things at play atrocities um certain levels of different armies that certainly were carrying out evil things i would not say there was not evil happening in war uh just that there's not a good versus evil factor in most of these wars. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Uh, this is going to be a two for day. So I am going to be making another video in addition to this one. So I hope you'll stick around for both. Make sure you have the notifications turned on so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.